hope that you enjoyed this section about mobility. In this video, I will look back at what we have seen. What does sustainable mobility mean for citizens? And how are they engaged in mobility transitions in their cities? First, you have seen that we have chosen not to focus on the car as the most discussed object of urban mobility. The car is of course relevant for its contribution to pollution and congestions. We decided, however, to focus on forms of slow mobility, since they turn out as promising elements in transitions towards sustainable urban mobility. For slow mobility to prosper, it needs to be well integrated into the urban mobility system. Mobility chains and the links that make them up are therefore a crucial factor to consider. Mobility chains are most effective when tailor-made for the particular travelling routines of the urban population. Making slow mobility tailor-made for urban travellers turns out to be a major challenge. Slow mobility and bikes in particular raise a lot of interest nowadays. This is a rather recent phenomenon, where bikes had been sidelined due to the increasing dominance of cars in the past decades, nowadays we see a radically different picture. We discuss this change in terms of a reverse tr transition in the making. Cities go back to bicycles again. We have seen that citizens are co-creating this transition in two ways. First, they are politically engaged. Citizens co-create political pressure to literally make space for bicycles in their cities. Secondly, they co-create more sustainable mobility systems by changing their travelling routines and practices, as we saw in the case of bike, cha bike sharing. Fluent connections between different forms of mobility are important for citizens to change their travel routines and practices to more sustainable ones. Despite the willingness for change from the side of cities and their citizens, we have not found the solution yet. There is not yet a silver bullet bike sharing system that is neatly integrated with other forms of urban mobility. To find even better solutions, the bike sharing systems should be made to better fit the mobility routines of the urban population. It turned out that information and communication technologies have great potential to help create such a better fit. ICT, ICTs make possible a next generation of city bikes that better fit the lifestyles of larger groups of urban travellers. Flexible, comfortable and easy accessible bikes could prosper in modern urban environments. Despite the growth of slow urban mobilities and the promise of being trendy and zero emission, we also paid attention to some of the downsides of slow travel. One important downside is that bikes may become an issue in terms of urban space. They can pollute the urban, urban environments by their sheer numbers and the lack of proper bike parking places. Therefore bicycles, as well as other forms of slow mobility, need to be well organized and well regulated in order to fit into urban space and in the urban mobility system. In sum, what we have learned is that a radical transition seems to be in the making. In many cities of the world, a reverse transition is being planned and enacted. After the shift from bikes to cars, we are now planning a transition back to bikes and slow infrastructures again. This reverse transition so far received great support from the side of the city authorities, companies and citizens alike. The future of urban mo mobility is as un unpredictable as ever, but these developments suggest that urban mobility is likely to face tremendous changes in the near future, and citizens are actively co-creating this inverse transition.